Welcome back everybody and thanks for tuning in to East Wing Woodworking. In today's video, we're going to install an accessory by Carbide 3D called the Bit Runner. Now for Shapoko owners like me who still use a router as their spindle, one could benefit from using this add-on as it automates the turning on and off of the router throughout a project. Now this is especially helpful when you're doing large projects that require multiple bit changes or when you might have to step away from your machine. You know, having the assurance that your router will automatically shut off at the end of a project, I have to admit, is a pretty cool feature. Now please, follow along throughout this installation and afterwards, we'll talk about the pros and cons of Carbide 3D's Bit Runner. Now let's get started. East Wing Woodworking. Now I didn't know this beforehand, but this is the deluxe version, which comes with an EMI filter. Now the EMI filter is not included with the standard bit runner version. Now, believe it or not, I actually purchased this accessory when I bought my machine, but never installed it. Truth be told, I was actually a bit nervous adding this accessory while assembling the machine at the same time, so I decided to put off the installation. After unboxing, here's what's included. The bit runner, the control pendant, the logic cable, the grounding cable, and the ethernet cable. The first thing we're gonna do is remove this drawer. It's gonna give me access to the back of my control panel and allow me to run the wiring and mount the bit runner inside. I like to keep my wiring nice and clean and out of the way. So I wanted to run the logic cable underneath the spoil board assembly. So I used this fish tape to make it easy. Before I forget, I just want to remind everyone that this is not a sponsored video. I purchased this accessory along with my machine, so just giving you all my honest perspective here. Because my machine is housed inside an enclosure, I had to remove the control board so I can get access to the mail connector for the logic cable. I would also recommend that you remove the cover of the control board. The reason is so you can use your fingers to support the 6-pin mail connector that you plug the logic cable into. I have to warn you, the connectors fit pretty tight. So supporting the connector on the board will ensure that you don't run the risk of snapping it off. Because if you do, it's going to be a bad day. This is what it should look like when the installation is complete. Now, let's install the grounding cable. Once you have finished routing the grounding cable, use an M5 screw to secure the ring terminal end of the cable to one of the two M5 holes on the left side of the spindle mount. Use a couple of zip ties to secure the grounding cable and make sure the cable is secured where it will not get in the way of the machine's movements. Now let's route the other end of the grounding cable into the cabinet.
this 3 8 inch bit was sufficient enough to allow me to push the Ethernet cable through. I decided to use some double-sided carpet tape to secure the control pendant. Now inside the cabinet, I start by connecting the bit runner to the terminal I used for the router. Next, I plug the router into the receiving plug of the bit runner. After that, I connect the grounding cable, then the ethernet cable, and lastly, the logic cable. All that's left to do now is clean up the excess wiring. I think that looks pretty good. Let's first turn everything on, then I'll walk you through the setup process. First, open up Carbide Motion. As of this recording, I'm using version 613. Now don't connect to the cutter. Instead, click on the button, set up new machine. Click Next and choose your machine. For me, I will choose the Shapoko Pro, then click Next. Here, click on Connect to Machine. Once you see Connection Established, click Next. On this page, we will choose our machine type Z axis and machine size, then click Next. On this screen, you can check your homing switch state. Afterwards, click Initialize Machine and then click Next. On this page, you can test your machine's motion. Each button will move your machine in its intended direction by approximately one inch. I think you could skip this part, but if you don't, just click Next afterwards. This page is where you would configure your bit setter. And this next page will allow you to move your spindle to directly over the bit setter to configure its optimal position. Click next. And finally, here's the page where you'll check the box, use bit runner to control router. Don't forget to click save changes and hit next. On this page, you can select your user interface limits in either inches or millimeters. Enable touch keyboard if you have one and enable remote access. Again, don't forget to click save changes and hit next. All that's left to do now is click finish and your setup is complete. Now it's time to connect to the cutter and initialize your machine. This next step is how I tested everything out. I started out by opening Carbide Create, and I made a simple 5x5 five five square. I then made a simple 5x5 five five box that I could use as a toolpath. I saved the file and called it Test for Bit Runner. I then went into the toolpath section and created a simple contour toolpath and set my max depth at 1 16th of an inch. I then saved my toolpaths in my file and went back to carbide motion. Back inside carbide motion, I chose the quick actions button to move my router over to my previously saved XY location. Once there, I zeroed the Z axis at this height. Right 
I then loaded my test file to start the job. One of the things I noticed right away when running this test file is it now takes the machine a couple of seconds to move after I click start. Now that our test was successful, let's look at a real world job example, and I'll try to keep the pros and cons short and sweet. The major pro here is the Bitrunner does exactly as advertised. The engineers over at Carbide 3D did an amazing job. Now the company continues to innovate and figure out ways to help their customers be more productive. Now the only con I have is there's a slight or couple second delay when you first initialize the machine or start a new job. Overall, I would say that this is a must have accessory. Again, I want to thank everyone for tuning in. I really appreciate the support. As of today's video, we're at 898 subscribers and getting closer to that 1,000 subscriber mark. Any one of our lucky subscribers will have a chance at our tool giveaway, so don't forget to smash that like button, hit subscribe, and see you next time on East Wing Woodworking.